As soon as we pull up to the spot, there were permit on the surface. So Dave spotted them. We circled back around to try to get a crab out in front of them. Within minutes of being there, Louisa was hooked up to a pretty big permit. Got one. Nice. Woo! Good job, Louisa. Yeah. Well done. Woo! Permit on, Catch guys. <laughs> Woo, that's what I love about permit fishing. I haven't caught a permit in a long time. There you go. Good fish. That's exciting. It's a beautiful fish. Ooh. Woo! And she's fighting it and fighting it and is pulling back line. I mean, permit are just so strong, man. They never give up. Don't you just love the sound? Good job. There it is. Now I can reel a little bit before he runs out again. I gotta go back to the boat, guys. Wow. And we were using 40 pound high seas fluorocarbon leader. You don't want him to see the line because they do have very good eyesight. So we had to take our time a little bit with it because uh, you know, you can't sit there and break your line off, but at the same time, you have to put enough pressure on them to keep them away from the sharks and the other things down there that'll want to eat them. Let me know when you get them close. I'll reach down there and get them for Gosh, you. Gosh, even that's exciting. Yeah, that's When was good the last one. time you caught a perm in here in the queue? Probably about that, this right? time last year. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the best times of year to get them. For sure. April, May, June, they're out here on the wrecks and stuff and on the reefs just uh, spawning and having a good old time I, offshore. Yeah. So if you don't have a flats, but you can come out here on an offshore boat, catch these tough fish. Woo! It's a race here. Gosh, this is awesome. First thing in the morning, it's a great way to start the day. You got them hooked perfect now. We'll just caress them in. Came in nice and slow. He actually ate a little crab. I had a probably the smallest crab in there. And that's what we're using for bait. Live crab. I see color. Okay. Check it out. Wow. Woo! Got him. Oh Woo! my gosh. And look at that oh little hook gosh! right there. Barely in his lip. Woo! Oh my gosh. Alright, there it is. <laughs> Got my Florida Keys permit. Very nice one, huh? Strong fish? Very strong. Awesome fight, for sure. Awesome, awesome. Yes. Real good fish. Well, this guy's had a long fight, so let's go ahead and get him back in the water and catch another one. Let's do it. Alright. Immediately after releasing Louisa's permit, I hooked into another one. Oh, there he is. Fish on! Oh, yeah! That took all of about four seconds. Oh, I just gotta keep him off these buoys. Oh no! Oh no! He's on the buoy. Is, I can feel it rubbing. Permit are such strong fish. They're in the jack family, and they just fight and they fight all the way, top to bottom. And it's so hard pulling them through the water. They know how to turn their body right to really, you know, put up a good fight because they don't want to get caught. Wrong direction. We gotta stay on this side because I'm wrapping now. It pulled off the rope. I, he's still under it. He's like, you're out, you're out. he's 100 yards past it though. Can you drive me that way? Because I might be able to pull him out that way. This thing has been in and out of every buoy in the ocean. And somehow, I still have him hooked up. And that's why I use a good leader too. This is a 30 pound high seas fluorocarbon leader, which is a light leader for a big fish like that. But you need this because permit have exceptional eyesight. This one had those big eyes. Very good at seeing. So, you got light leader on, rubbing all over the buoy ropes and everything else, and it didn't even cut me off. Jeez, look at that thing just flow off of this reel. Five minutes in and it's still pulling drag like that. Big, big fish. This has to be a big one. I got 300 yards almost gone. He is, he's a mile that way. He's gone, he's gone, he's gone. He's, I was just about to change that drag too. And just pull it off. That's what happens sometimes. Louisa got a nice one. That was a big one, that was a really big one. Disappointing, but there's a bunch of them out here. Got him. Woo, woo. Good job, Jimmy. <laughs> Let's see if we can keep this one off the buoys, guys. It's really awesome being able to have such a great fishery here in America and in the Florida Keys to where you can catch one permit after another. We target these fish all around the world, different islands in the Caribbean that we go to, and I've never seen 
such numbers of permit as I've seen in Florida. Now we're in business. There he goes. <laughs> See, I switched reels out. I was using that Evict, but the, uh, the noise maker on the drag went out on that fish. You really want something that you can, you can put the brakes on it if you have to, something hard and strong enough to keep it off the wreck. And this Shield 6000 is able to do it. I would recommend a 6000 size reel or bigger because you do want to land these fish quick. You don't want to have to fight them all day long and send them back dead because you're fighting on light tackle, something that's going to hurt them. We got him. He's close here, guys. This one's going to be well earned. I don't think it's anywhere near as big as that last one that I just lost, but uh, still a good fish. These fish, they're just, the way they're shaped, they just turn themselves sideways. It's just like pulling the lid of a trash can through the water. There he is. Hey, he's, he's much smaller than the last one, but still not a bad fish. I have the smallest permit in the whole school. Sometimes it's hard to tell how big the permit are because they're just such strong fish, even the medium-sized fish. And there he is. Something on these little ones. I just want to show you guys here. If you're gonna grab a permit, there are a few things that can hurt you on it. These spikes on his back, he's actually flexing up right now. Those are very, very sharp. Super sharp, hard bone right there. Don't want to get stuck by one of those. Everything else on this fish is 100% safe to touch. Got uh, no teeth in its mouth at all. Just crushers on the top there for the crabs and shrimp and stuff that they eat. And they have those really soft lips, like people lips. He's out here for some loving too though. They're all out here spawning, trying to make some babies, make more permit. And all right. some crabs. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go ahead and drop him back in. I haven't done this in 28 years. That takes teamwork, man, good job. Only because I'm fishing with the best out here, right? When you use this type of tackle, you have to wind really quickly, and you've gotta to try to protect your knuckles because the reel has no anti-reverse. They call it the knuckle breaker, he's jumping. You also have to employ a lot of hand-eye coordination. It's so cool to get tight on a sailfish, but to do it on fly, it's even more rewarding. About to get the leader on this. When that red touches the tip, I got a sail on fly. Woo! I got a sail on fly. Look at the fly in his mouth, dude. That is so sick. I'm pumped, man. Getting the fly now. Man, what a day. I lost count of sailfish in the teens. And now to get a sail on fly is just, yeah, sick. Very cool, man. Thank you. That's too easy. You make it too easy. Excellent. I mean, come on. Nice job. Thank you, man. The Pacific Fins crew and I continue our stellar day of fishing in the calm Pacific waters off the Guatemalan coast. Now, our target species are mahi-mahi and yellowfin tuna. We're hoping to spot the large pods of spinner dolphin, which hold big concentrations of tuna on their perimeter. I got Niles Miller in the house, catching a mahi in Guatemala. My son is currently studying at USC in LA. Until this moment, he's been behind the scenes, working on the production of the show. But now, he's on set, ready to fight fish, alongside his very proud dad. Nice. That's a nice one, Niles. Yes. Nice one, man. Woo! Niles Miller's on the board. Once we got into the Mahi Mahi, it just kept getting better and better. We got twins. Hello. Oh! As a fisherman, you always need to be ready to react quickly. It's a game of inches. Every second counts. That's called high impact fishing. Because of their vibrant coloring, high speed runs, acrobatic jumps, it's easy to see why mahi are so much fun to target. Nice. This guy was hanging out with his two girlfriends. Decided to have a little ballyhoo uh, bonanza and they ate him. So 
Well, now I'm gonna grab one of the females and show you the head difference. See the female head is rounded off and the male head is squared off. So we got the male and the female. With all these mahi in the boat, a sailfish on fly, I consider this a phenomenal fishing day. But just as I was thinking that, the right long popped out and it was a monster mahi. Oh man, this is a backbreaker. This is the big boy. Look at the size of this fish, guys. 35 pounds. In the age of social media, it's always nice to have great photos of your adventures. So you know you're gonna find this exact photo on my Instagram page. That's a slammer. Look at the size of his head. We're using live bonita for bait. And you can see their mouths aren't that big. So it's pretty remarkable that he swallowed that because it was about a six pound fish. As we turn the boat towards home, lunch is served. Fresh grilled mahi. And simultaneously, we are greeted by thousands of spinner dolphin showing off their moves. As much as we were in awe of their synchronized launches and spins, we knew that it was time to go after the elephant tuna. Tuna stayed close to these pods, picking up the scraps left behind by the spinner dolphin. Three tunas with the spinners jumping all into us. This is like Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them, man. This is unbelievable. Guatemalan yellowfin coming in. Even though they're not trophy sized by any means, it's rare for me to have the opportunity to catch this specific tuna, one of my favorite eating fish. Oh my god, we're gonna have some sashimi. This is the best day ever. You see this? Yes! Yes! So now we gotta keep up with a dolphin. I'm on. Double header. When you're in a pot of dolphin catching tuna, you need to bring them in fast in order to stay with the tuna, which shadow the dolphin. Yellowfin tuna. The best. Hey Niles, you wanna come catch a tuna? They're all over the place, dude. We're on the perimeter right now. We should get a bite any second. There it is. You're gonna get a bite in a second. All right, double up. That couldn't have been coordinated any better. <laughs> Switch holders. Hey, Niles, first yellow and tuna. Woo! That's a chunky monkey. Good job, man. Good job, Captain. Way to go. The Maverick strikes again. People ask me all the time if I eat raw fish. So, here's your answer. There's nothing better than fresh yellow and tuna straight out of the ocean. It's almost my birthday. For my 34th birthday, I wanna paddle a mile every hour for 24 hours. Like a random 10 of my 24 hours, I'm gonna paddle an extra mile so that by the end of my 24 hour paddling, I will have hit 34 miles. So I'm getting started in about an hour here. I've opted to start at 10.59. I was born at 10.59. PM, but I'm gonna start at 10.59 AM. So before I do this, uh, I have my gallon filled. I drink a gallon of water every day. I've got my big breakfast set up so that I have a good start to the day with good energy. Hooray! We will get started on time. I'm gonna do one or two miles for the first, for my first one out. I think I'll do two miles in the first round. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Warm up. 11 o'clock on the dot. Woohoo! I'm so excited I forgot my life jacket. First two miles in the books. Got a little bit of a boat wake out there. Okay. Number two. Uh, three miles down, 31 to go. 22 hours left. It would be easier just to go out and paddle 34 miles straight and then sleep at night like a normal human. 
with a normal circadian rhythm, but stopping every mile, coming back to the house and switching gears, switching projects, and then trying to stop whatever I'm doing and restart the paddling. It's a different kind of discipline. Starting once is easy. Starting 24 times is hard. I was almost late for that one, but luckily I left my board Oh, hey! <laughs> Woo -hoo. All right, man. I ain't gonna lie. So, this is fun so far. I mean, that was only what the third time out. All right, post lunch. It'd be nice to take a nap right now. No. Are you gonna canoe it? Yeah, they're already down. Okay. I get company for the post lunch paddle. It is 1.58. I think we'll do dose smiles. What do you think, two? Yeah. All right. Two miles set in the GPS. So we overshot because we caught some sick boat wakes. So we went 2.5 miles on that one. Like 10 minutes until we have to get back on the water. after four. I got a little pull in that last one. It was nice. It brought me over, slightly over one mile to 1.05 or 08 or whatever, but that gives me enough to round up the four point, the 2.4 or seven, whatever. So I don't have any more half miles left. I quickly realized after two rounds at 2.5 and 2.4 miles an hour, it takes 30 minutes, you know? So if that was gonna happen, I, I don't think I would make the full 24 hours. I am 10 miles in, one, two, three, four, five, six hours in to my 24 hour, 34 mile birthday extravaganza. Okay, so we just did the one where the sun completely disappeared. It's very peaceful, very beautiful. Before we went out for that one, I was feeling kind of tired. I think dinner revived me. Okay, 11 o'clock at night. We are over halfway done. We're gonna do two miles at 11 p.m. Just finished up the 2 a.m. paddle. Before that, we ate the birthday cake. Sleepy. And now we're sleepy. Why am I doing this? I'd really much rather be sleeping right now. Six, seven. seven hours to go. You now have to do two miles every hour for the next four hours. To hit your goal. What are goals, really? <laughs> Second to last session, hour 23 of 24 hours of paddling. I'm tired, I'm covered in bug bites, I'm mildly delusional. This is the last paddle. Is someone tired? Yeah. April's Elk, 34 miles, 24 hours, one year older. Now it's time for all the what and all the what. 
cake and presents? This is a giant float. Uh, even experienced guys that have been on Steelhead Rivers a lot say, you know, this is a long float, 14 miles. It takes all day, even if you just float. So by us stopping quite a few times and back trolling these plugs, we've got to manage our time and we've got to really dissect this water. Then we spot a few more fish and there was a great spot on the left side of the river that just, it looked super fishy, right? It had the water flow that we were looking for, those factors that we were finding. There he is right there. Did we just catch one in the exact same spot? Yeah. Dude, we did. that was nuts. Jared called it out. Cut them in the exact same spot. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, you had our creatures of habit. They like to uh, lay in the same spots and, uh, you know, right. generally when one steelhead pulls into a spot and you catch one there, more than likely the next day or even later on that day, you're going to catch another one in the same spot. I don't know if you saw this thing jump, but it's a big fish. This is Jared's baby. If there's any place that Jared knows, this is it. So he's on the sticks and he's running the show. I'm casting where he tells me to. We're working the holes, we're going around, we're doing this. And everything's working like, just like clockwork. Yes! Jay Rat! Oh my God, dude. What a beautiful fish. Look at that plug pop right out. Oh, dear Lord. Oh! Yeah, yeah, baby. Cakes. Yeah, baby. Look at that fish, huh? And you can see the red stripe. This fish has been in here a little while, and you can also see this beautiful, uh, you can see it's a buck. You see the long kipe it has right here, and also how the jawline comes down behind the eye. That's how you know it's a buck.